A scatter graph can help you visualize how two numerical values are related. One dot represents both measurements for a single instance. For example, you could graph the size of different trees in a forest. Each dot on this graph represents one tree, and it shows its circumference around and its height. Looking at it, I can see that the trees that are bigger around are also the trees that are taller. Scatter graphs can compare any two numbers. You could look at people's height versus weight, a city's size versus its population, or the amount of time that students studied compared to the grade they got on a test. Whatever you want to show on a scatter graph, you start by putting all your data in Excel. You'll label two columns. The first will be your x-axis and the second will be your y-axis. If you had any control over one of the variables, you'd want to put that one first. If you didn't have anything to do with either of the measurements, you can pick whichever one you want to go in the first column. It's very important to label your data with the units that you measured in. For mine, the circumference and the height were both measured in meters, but I have to label it or someone might assume that I measured in feet or inches. Once your data is in the spreadsheet, you're ready to make the scatter chart. First, you select your data, and then you go to the Insert tab and find the XY Scatter Chart icon. Then you'll choose Scatter. Once you have your chart, the first thing you want to do is add a title. You want it to describe both of your measurements. Next, you're going to add labels for both your x-axis and your y-axis. If you want to use the same wording that you used when you labeled your data a few minutes ago, you can link to that text. You'll do that by going to the formula bar and typing equals, and then select the cell that has your data label. If you would like to change the wording, you can select the axis title and then just type a different description of your measurement, but be sure that you include the units here as well. All right, at this point, you have a nice looking graph. It has the data and the labels. Now let's take a look at how you would display more than one set of data on your chart. There's two different ways you can add data to your chart, and which one you use depends on whether the new data uses the same X values that you already recorded, or if it has different X values. So if you're adding data with the same X values, uh, suppose that for each circumference of my tree, I know the average height of the Douglas firs in the area, and I want to include those on my chart. So then I would record these values in a new column to the right of my data. So for example, the 0.3 meter circumference tree, then I have that the average height is 8.4 meters and so forth. So now I can select the graph and I can find where my data is highlighted. I'll find the lower right hand corner of the highlighting and I'll drag that to include my new data. You can see it gets added as a new data set with its own color. At this point, I would want to add a legend to my chart to make it clear which data set was which, and I might need to update my title and my axis labels. Now let's look at how we would add the data if the X values are not the same. Suppose I went to a different forest and I measured the circumference and the height of the trees there. I'd record my data in a different area of my sheet, including both the X and the Y values. I need to be sure that the headers of my first data set still apply to my new data set. So for mine, I'd record the circumference in the first column and the height in the second column, just like I did the first time. And since the units for my first data set were measured in meters, I need to record the new data in meters as well. Once you have your second data set in the workbook, you select the chart and on the design tab, go to select data. You'll add a series and you'll name it whatever you want to appear in the legend. Then you'll select the X values and the Y values of your data set from the spreadsheet. When you're done, you may also want to update the name of your original series before you exit out of the dialog. Again, you'll want to add the legend to your chart. You may need to update your title and your axis labels to reflect the new data that you've brought in. Now that you know how to add data, let's look at how to make the chart fancy. You can show a trend line of each data set. If you select a series, then you'll right click and choose add trend line. This is going to add a straight line that shows the general trend of your data. If your data looks more like a curve than a straight line, then some of these other options might be a better match. 
Whenever you've found the trend line type that you want to use, you can go to the bottom and check the box to display the trend line's equation on your chart. And this could be especially helpful for future analysis of your data. You can style the chart with different colors and designs by selecting the chart and go to design. Then you'll pick from a selection of preset styles. And that is how you make a scatter graph. If you want a head start on creating your own scatter graph, you're welcome to download this Excel file that I used for the video, and then you can add your data to it. You can also check out our videos if you'd like to make other kinds of charts in Excel. We do have one video for making this scatter chart in Google Sheets if you'd prefer to make your graph online or have other people collaborate with it. Subscribe to our channel for more chart tips and how-to videos.